Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Jay Dreamers and we're talking about the plasma apocalypse, specifically the cyclical plasma apocalypse. Um, this, ex this apocalyptic scenario is going to be experienced by everyone in the world. And so it's going to be seen and experienced by many different perspectives and belief systems and things of that nature. So there are a lot of elements that go into the cyclical apocalypse, many different things that are going to be happening all in the same time. The one thing that we're going to talk about in this video is the sky opening up and then anything that's not tied down, um, that's near the epicenter, basically getting sucked up into the air, um, and our world losing its gravity and things of that nature. So we're going to jump right into that. You don't want to get sucked up into the sky or maybe you do. I don't know if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. But this video is going to be for those of you who are interested in knowing what to expect and having the tools available to better prepare yourself just in case you don't want to get sucked up into the sky. Now, this has been seen as the rapture event. It will be seen as the rapture event in the Christian community. Um, this will be seen as uh, the tractor beams of the aliens. This is stuff that's been in pop culture for years and years and years now. But first, we're going to talk about um, why it's going to happen. Okay, we're going to talk about how it's going to happen. And then we're going to get into like examples and stuff like that. So let me explain the picture that I've drawn here up on camera two. So let's go to camera two here. And as you can see, I've drawn a little diagram. For those of you who are not familiar with this diagram, please go check out my other Plasma Apocalypse videos, specifically the one that says Plasma Apocalypse. So basically in a nutshell, you have our world right here, okay? And our world has the highest, hardest glass ceiling that's always being talked about. It is, um, it's basically our ice dome. It's our roof of our world. And it's also the thing that's protecting us from the plasma sphere that exists above us. Um, regardless of whatever your cosmology or worldview is, this, this plasma apocalypse model and theory will work for whatever you, you know, whatever you believe in or whatever perspective that you have. So, um, if you want to know more about the mechanics, please go back to my other Plasma Apocalypse video and check that out. And I, I explain um, all of this picture in great detail. But we're going to skip ahead for those of you who have already seen that. Basically, you've got a snow globe type of a world here, okay? And that's our world, which is why, by the way, you see so many... Uh, so much snow globe symbolism in the television shows and movies of today usually the snow globe breaking, right? Like when you're watching a movie, they'll zoom right up close to that snow globe and show it breaking. That's because it's just foreshadowing events that have already happened. Everything that we're going to be talking about and everything that I have ever talked about on my channel is the same old story. There's only one story that can, that can be told. There's only one story. It's our story. And there's only one story that can be told. So we just tell it from thousands of different perspectives. That's what every movie you have ever seen is about. It's what every song that's ever been sung is about. The same story over and over. All right, so let's talk about the picture here. All right, so basically in a nutshell, we've got our ice dome here and we live in an electromagnetic world, all right? When the poles shift, okay? When the poles shift, there will be a neutral point where basically the power or the electromagnetic current that coming to our world will be shut off. Now, right now, everything is pulling us down here, downward, okay? So we're getting pulled downward. Now, two things are going to happen when the poles shift, okay? When we go through this pole shift. The first thing that's going to happen is that we're going to experience a loss of what we believe to be gravity. Okay. Now, if you do or don't believe in gravity, that's okay. Use whatever word works for you. Okay. I like electromagnetism. So I'm going to speak from that point of view. Basically, when the poles shift, there will be a neutral point right in the middle where the power will be off. The electromagnetics that run our world will be off. And therefore, that force will be gone for a time, okay, for a short time. Now, when the, also when that happens, 
um, the ice that is currently cracking above our heads. And that's why we, we hear those strange sounds in the sky. That's the ice just cracking and thinning out. And uh, you can Google it. You know, ice makes that type of a sound. Uh, even glaciers, all that type of stuff. So that's all going to crack open, okay? Specifically right in the middle, this area right here is going to crack open first. Now there may be subsequent holes or explosions, but this whole part of the ice dome is going to break off. And the next thing that's going to happen, remember, we live in a pressurized world. This enclosed system is pressurized. And because of that, when you, just like when you open a can of soda and you put a hole into a pressurized system, everything that's on the inside naturally wants to escape. It wants to come out. Uh, so no, that's not Atari world even though that is the symbol for Atari, which uh, I drew that purposefully just like that. But um, everything on the inside is going to want to come out. So anything that's not tied down and attached to the earth is going to want to come up out of the sky. And because in essence there is no gravity or uh, there is no electromagnetic force that is pushing us down against the ground or pulling us, however you'd like to see it, then people and things will just be floating around anyhow. And once the, the top is popped off, then everything is going to get sucked up violently. And this is going to cause a lot of other things to happen. All right. So let me just check my notes here. I will be referring to my notes quite often. Okay. So that's the gist of it. All right. We live in a pressurized world. The poles shift, gravity is basically disappears or the electromagnetic force is now gone and things start to float around. The ice dome cracks and it opens up. The sky opens, the sky will fall. This has been a part, uh, an integral part of our collective subconscious for, you know, millennia after millennia, the concept of the sky falling down to earth. And I'm not talking about asteroids and things of that nature. I'm talking about the sky being a physical object that breaks up and falls down back to us. So this will be seen as the rapture event or, you know, the tractor beams where people get sucked up into the air. Um, the sky will open. This is actually prophetic. This is written in the Bible that the sky will uh, basically disappear, that it will recede like a scroll, that it will no longer be there because it's going to fall apart. Or at least parts of it will. And because the sky is ice, okay, because that dome above us is ice, not the sky, but the dome above us, the covering is made of ice. If it, if it is made of ice, right? Uh, this is all speculation, by the way, so don't leave comments telling me you know, that my facts are off or whatever. I'm just speaking from the gut and it's just an idea. If you don't like it, just look at it like that. The ramblings of a madman. Anyhow, moving forward. So because the ice dome is going to be cracking apart, we will see huge hailstones uh, that are the size of some people's houses in some places. And that's why the Bible talks about the sky opening up and, the, uh, you know, like stones uh, of hail mixed with blood will be falling down. Ice will be falling down from the sky. All right. So let's get into the interesting stuff. Now I love talking about this because it's very, very probable and realistic in my mind, at least, but it sounds so ridiculous to everyone else. So honestly, this video is really only for a select few. This video is for uh, those people who have an ear to hear and eyes to see for everyone else. It's just going to be an entertaining and ridiculous video. And that's fine with me too. All right. So, uh, the dome will open up, the sky will open up, releasing all of the pressure inside. Everything that's not essentially tied down will start to move toward the exit point, okay? Which is going to be right above the North Pole. Now, right above the North Pole is where it will be the strongest pole, right? So this center line represents the strongest pull in the middle, whatever's directly under the hole is going to get up, uh, all of that air and debris and everything that will be sucked up the quickest and the strongest. It'll have the strongest suction to it, right? Uh, as you get further and further out from the middle and I put a diagram up there too, you'll see it in a bit. As you get further away from the epicenter, then that suction force will be less and less. 
as you get further and further away. Now, let's talk about some interesting stuff. I want to talk about rapid depressurization. That's exactly what is happening. When I say get, don't get sucked up, okay, it's being sucked up because our world is being rapidly depressurized. And the best example that I could think of in, to explain this is it's just like when people get onto an airplane, uh, the airplane can be depressurized, right? Because the higher up or lower down it goes, it needs to adjust the pressure on the inside. Just like scuba divers, when they're underwater, they need to adjust their pressure, right? Now, rapid depressurization is whenever you take the pressure away from something very quickly, okay? So just like whenever you open up a can of soda, it is being depressurized. All that pressure on the inside is released, all right? That's, that's all we're talking about. Our world is going to be depressurized. Now, some, the first thing that I realized when I, when I was thinking about this is that the very, one of the very first things that's going to happen is that our world is going to turn into a foggy, misty world, especially more and more fog, the closer to the epicenter you get. All right. And this is why so many post-apocalyptic movies or scary movies, they have, uh, and feature fog as being this creepy component to you know, what's happening, like all the death that's going on. There's a movie, I think, called The Fog. Uh, there's definitely The Mist. And The Mist is all about this particular uh, situation, okay? It's like Stephen King took a little slice out of time, which is, which is the story of those who survive right after this event, where everything gets sucked up. Uh, they will be living, we will be living in a foggy, misty world. Um, and like I did in my last video about the space whales, um, there will also be, well, I might as well just show you real quick, but out here there are animals or beings or, you know, some people can call them aliens, call them whatever you want to. But once everything depressurizes and it gets stable, once again, all of this stuff will be able to come in. Okay. All the stuff, all the beings or animals or whatever they are, okay? Um, I call them phantazoids. Please check out my video on space whales uh, if you haven't already. But basically, there are these space whales or these monsters, these animals, these leviathan and behemoth that are just outside of our world, and they will be able to come into our world. So, after our world becomes depressurized, um, all of the air that's in our atmosphere will pretty much instantly turn into fog or mist. Let me show you an example. Let's go over to screen sharing. Now I took a video, um, some examples of planes rapidly depressurizing. What happens is the air itself expands so quickly that the air just instantly turns into cloud. That's what's happening in the video underneath me. And I've, you can Google this information. It's very easy to find, or you can YouTube it just like I did. But also you, I've checked out the accounts of plane survivors, people who have, um, you know, been in planes whenever it's depressurized up in the air mid flight and listening to their stories about what they experienced is exactly what I expect people to experience going through during this particular time of the plasma apocalypse. Okay. So let's talk about what happens, what you can expect to experience during rapid depressurization um, of our world. Now, keep in mind, it's going to depressurize more and that force is going to be more the closer to the epicenter that you get. Uh, keep your eyes out for a little map. I actually superimposed um, a, uh, a pressure map, right? About how much damage you can expect to get. Next time I see it, I'll stop it and we'll talk about it. Um, but keep your eyes out for that particular map on here as well. So anyhow, yeah, the closer to the epicenter you get, the stronger the suction, the stronger the force, which means a lot of stuff for us here on the ground, okay? First and foremost, that's, that's where those areas of the world are going to be the foggiest and um, more mist-like, you know what I mean? But 
Let's talk about what you can expect during a rapid depressurization of the world. First of all, you will have instant fog, instant mist, or if it's very, very cold where you are, possibly instant snow and fog and mist, okay? Which, by the way, is exactly why you have, like in the movie Stranger Things, why they always have that sort of foggy, creepy you know, texture to like the upside down and also possibly why you have like this ashy snow look and stuff that in, that just falls around all over the place. It just floats around, right? It's either ash or snow or maybe a combination of both because we also know that during the plasma apocalypse, there's going to be a lot of burning going on as well, right? And that's, that's from, that's from hundreds of prophecies or around the world and across cultures. Okay. The second destruction of our world, depending on how you look at it, is supposed to come by fire when the first one came by water. Anyhow, I digress. Rapid depressurization of our world. Instant fog or snow and mist. Uh, water, by the way, can boil whenever it's rapidly depressurized, okay? At lower temperatures, water, you can get water to boil at room temperature if it's depressurized enough. So, have you ever heard stories of like the oceans boiling or strange things like that? Like really large bodies of water? You can expect to see that at the epicenter. As a matter of fact, just like in Interstellar over here showing you the huge waves, right? There's huge ocean waves going up into the air or, you know, the Red Sea floating straight up in the air or the movie Moana when the water parts and it goes straight up into the air. That's because that's what you can expect to see around or within the Arctic Circle. Okay, the waters that are within the Arctic Circle, you can expect to see huge walls of water just floating straight up into the air. Um, that's closer to the epicenter, like I said. Please keep in mind, the strongest force is going to be directly under the epicenter, right above the North Pole, um, right where that initial blast is going to take place through the ice dome or the glass dome of our world. All right. So uh, those of you who live further and further away, if you're thinking, how does this apply to me? Just lessen the severity of it, the further out you get. Okay. <clears throat> so let's move on. All right. We're talking about rapid depressurization. So in our world, right? Once that hole opens up, it's going to all come out. Everything is going to try to want to come out, especially because everything is going to be floating in the air due to a momentary loss of our electromagnetic um, force. So we have instant fog. This is the mist world where you will see the mist monsters and, you know, n try to make things out. What happens whenever we become depressurized, right? Let's see, water boils at lower pressures, so you possibly might see water bubbling up, uh, depending on where you live. Now, the other thing that's interesting to me is I like the show Stranger Things. And in the show Stranger Things, uh, this girl, Eleven, uh, when she's going to use her psychic abilities or her powers, she gets a bloody nose. I know a lot of you probably picked up on that. But the bloody nose is also a sign of this particular event or bloody ears as well, but usually a bloody nose. See, that's what happens whenever um, the body, that's, that's, the, the, that's what I was trying to show you guys over there. Here, I'll pause that real quick. Oh, uh, well, I can't pause it, but you guys can pause it. All right, I'll go back. <laughs> but anyhow, so the girl gets a bloody nose, right? This is this is showing, this is one of the signs that she has these powers or whatnot. Well, that's also what's going to happen to many of you out there is you'll get a bloody nose as well. As a matter of fact, passengers on airplanes uh, who have been through rapid depressurization, they reported signs like bloody noses, right? Or sometimes bloody ears, depending on what happens or how powerful it is. Also... Silence. Uh, airline pilots have reported that, you know, basically like whenever the rapid depressurization affected um, their inner ears, that they experienced basically a loss of hearing or silence uh, for quite some time. Now, if we do experience instant silence due to, our, you know, our ears popping or whatever it is that's happening on the inner ear. I'm not an expert on it, okay? I'm just looking at the signs. This reminds me of so many 
music videos and songs where they talk about the silence or the sound of silence. As a matter of fact, in the disturbed version of the sound of silence, they have all of these elements all happening. The band members pick up these like instruments that look like they just fell down onto the ground, like they're trash, and they walk around in this fog. And they're talking about the sound of silence and, you know, how uh, the people bowed and prayed to the neon god, you know, that there was this flash of neon light in the sky. And I mean, it's it's that's the whole song. As a matter of fact, like I said, I'm pretty convinced Every song is about this plasma apocalypse, except from different perspective and people experiencing different aspects of it. I would love to hear all of your comments in the comment section or in the chat. Um, all of your references that you guys have, you know, song lyrics or movie scenes or whatever it may be that directly relate to this topic and the plasma apocalypse. But let's talk about some more rapid depressurization. So whenever the sky falls, our world will rapidly depressurize everything that is floating during the time of transition or the changing of the poles or the polarity of our world. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice a little bit, but anyhow, that magnetic or electromagnetic force will be neutral or it will basically be off in essence for a time. Everything will be floating that's not tied down to the ground or attached to it. And then our world will rapidly depressurize, sucking everything in the middle directly up. And this is your tractor beam. This is your... Uh, your rapture event, etc. People will experience bloody noses, uh, headaches, silence. Pe a lot of people won't be able to hear for um, for a while. A loss of oxygen. This is pretty important, okay? So if you're worried about your safety and you know what to do and how to survive and everything, you need to take into account that oxygen our air will be sucked up and out of our world exactly like in the movie Spaceballs, okay? Now, not all of it. I don't think that all of the air is going to get sucked up or we're going to be left with a lack of oxygen or anything. <clears throat> actually, I have a theory that after this is all said and done, we may actually get more oxygen into our world. But during this depressurization, we're going to be losing a lot of our oxygen. And this is also what people in airplanes have reported. It's actually, there's a word for it. It's called hypoxia. And hypoxia is whenever you don't get enough oxygen to your blood or to your brain. And along with hypoxia, here are some of the symptoms you need to know these, all right? Uh, delirium, okay? So people, it's kind of like people get really high and they just, they become kind of like euphoric and delirious sometimes. Um, they can sort of revert back into like talking like a child, um, hallucinations. So this is going to be pretty big, right? Cause there's gonna be a lot of crazy stuff happening. And a lot of people are susceptible to hallucinations during, uh, you know, when hypoxia is setting in, uh, headaches, loss of focus and awareness. I watched a lot of videos where people are training, uh, they actually go through hypoxia training for, uh, astronauts and pilots and stuff like that. And, they had the mask right there in front of them, the oxygen mask. And they, the instructors told them, when I tell you to put that mask back on, you need to put it back on your face or you will die without fail. Every video I watched where people were told, okay, go ahead and put your mask back on. You know, it's, it's getting critical. The people did not. They just, they laughed. They were like, I don't want to die, huh? but they couldn't put the mask back on. They could not follow instruction at all. You know, they could not think critically at all. They couldn't, they couldn't do simple puzzles whenever, uh, they were lacking oxygen to the brain. And this all took about five minutes before they said, Hey, it's critical. And they had to put the mask on to the other people for them. That's how bad it was, you know? So this is a very important thing, especially the closer you are to the epicenter. So oxygen, this event is going to take oxygen away from our air. Those of you with breathing problems, you need to start looking into, you know, alternative remedies in order to oxygenate your blood. Now, I have some ideas for you right now. Uh, let's see. There's also a loss of focus, a loss of awareness. Okay, so first and foremost, if you would like to, if you have a safe place for this event, for the plasma apocalypse, I highly recommend investing and in getting some canned 
oxygen. Okay. Now that's also in Spaceballs. I don't know. Like this is all the movies are truth. They're just handed to us. Like here's all the truth. You know what I mean? There's no disclaimer on the movie saying what you're about to watch is absolutely not true whatsoever. Like that's not, there's no disclaimer. Even if it's fictional or fantasy or sci-fi, they don't come out and say, Hey, this is all a lie. We assume it's all a lie, right? But in reality, it's all true. It's just truth told in story form. Anyhow, hold on. Let me get back to the live scene here. We'll go back to the other one. That way you can have that picture up there. <laughs> My beautiful artwork. Okay. So anyhow, let's talk about hypoxia. Uh, we're talking about, for those of you who have just joined us, we're talking about what happens during the plasma apocalypse when our world is rapidly depressurized. Instantly, fog and mist will appear everywhere. Okay. And, um, you know, that's where you get the movie, the mist and why that's happening and stuff. People will experience bloody nose, which is a precursor to experiencing their true powers. Okay. And I'm going to talk about that in another video, but it is highly probable that this is going to affect many people's DNA. This is going to affect your body and unlock lots of parts of your DNA, um, where people will basically have psychic abilities. Okay. All right, let's see here. Uh, silence. There will be silence when all this happens. Now it'll start off really loud because the initial blast, um, I believe that's going to be a really loud sound followed by silence. By the way, if you're a biblical scholar, then you know, it says in the Bible, when all of this happens and the sky is falling and all, you know, the stuff in revelation happens, uh, one of the John, basically the guy who's watching all this happen in the Bible, he says, and then I heard silence in heaven for about a half an hour. Now, I think that's about how long this is going to last for this whole suction activity. I think that the silence in heaven is everything getting sucked up and out, just like in a vacuum, you know, you don't hear anything. So I think that this silence is going to last about a half an hour, just like it says in the Bible. All right. So people are going to, um, experience mild forms of hypoxia, stronger forms of hypoxia. If you live closer to the epicenter. Okay. Uh, these can include delirium, hallucinations, headaches, loss of focus and awareness, uh, unable to follow commands. So I, I recommend getting canned air or, you know, air in a can, basically oxygen specifically in a can. Okay. Not just air, but oxygen. And that's exactly how it is in space balls. They crack open that can of air or Perry air, right? I think it was. That is reality fed right back to us. Okay. And they also actually suck the atmosphere off of planet Druidia. Okay. That's the same thing. So things that you can do to prepare for this, you can get some oxygen in a can. Um, I think it's going to last about a half an hour. And for me, I would probably use three one liter cans of oxygen. So that's just, that's what I'm planning for. You can adjust that however you'd like to. Remember, some people are going to need more oxygen because lots of you out there smoke or you've got problems breathing or your asthma is real bad, you know, stuff like that. Um, other things you can do is you can get some cell food and I'll go ahead and show you what this is. No, this is not paid endorsement or anything. This is just what me and Jenny bought. Uh, off of Amazon for ourselves. Okay. Cell food is going to oxygenate your blood. So you want to get into the habit of oxygenating your blood, um, getting the oxygen in there. You want to work on your respiratory system, you know, start doing exercises and, and work on your cardio right now. That way you're not left short of breath when the time comes. Um, for those of you who find it impossible to do these things, you can start taking vitamin C. Uh, it's better to take vitamin C by drinking the juices that have it like orange juice, right? And vitamin E, vitamin E is what hikers use when they climb up to high altitudes. You'll see empty bottles of vitamin E all over the place because it oxygenates their blood. So these are the things that you can do. You can prepare by getting some oxygen in a can, right? Or bottle, bottled oxygen, whatever it's called. Uh, you can get cell food. Um, which is this stuff right here. Go ahead and Google that. That actually helps out with a lot of stuff. Uh, cell food, you can take vitamin C and vitamin E. You can also do things that are very obvious like, Hey, now's a great time to stop smoking. Okay. Like 
that's if that's not incentive to stop smoking, I don't know what is, you know? Like stop smoking or you could suffocate during the plasma apocalypse, you know? Take your choice. <clears throat> uh let's see here. Okay, so I think there's going to be a loud bang, which is the initial suction of everything, followed by about a half an hour of silence, right? And like I said, let's talk about how to be safe. Well, the first thing that we need to do in order to be safe is make sure you're not outside, obviously, right? If you're whatever is outside and it's not attached to the earth, it's going to start floating around. It's going to lose gravity for a moment. And in that moment, the roof of our world is going to essentially explode, okay? And uh, everything is going to get sucked up. It's going to become rapidly depressurized, which means all that floating stuff is going to, it's going to go in that direction, okay? It's going to go north, basically. Um, everything is going to start, get sucked northwards. So you don't want to be outside and this is going to happen around Christmas Eve, Christmas time. Okay. So I highly recommend that you spend Christmas indoors in your safety areas. Okay. I have a plan with me and my family, um, of how we're going to be safe during this particular time. We will be indoors. We won't be outside at all. No one's, no one's going to be allowed to go outside because you don't want to be caught outside when all of this stuff happens, you know? Otherwise, you're going to be looking for a tree or something to hold on to during the plasma apocalypse. And then you're going to be hoping and praying that, you know, none of the plasma tentacles or the electric tentacles come down and get you. Okay. That's the other part, but that's an entirely different video. We are going to talk about that. I'm going to make a whole video about the plasma tentacles and how they, uh, they're basically the hydra. Okay. They, they go down and then they split and they go down more and they split and they're looking for something and, uh, you don't want to be caught by them. You don't want them to attach to you, so, so to speak. Okay. Um, but we'll talk about that in another video. All right. Now, let's see here. It's going to be silent. A lot of your ears out there, you guys' ears are probably going to pop and it's going to be really hard to hear anything. Um, it's going to be hard to breathe. So I recommend taking in your breath and letting about half your breath out and then breathing in again. You just want to be able to make it through about a half an hour, okay? After about a half an hour, I think everyone's going to be okay. Uh, let's see here. You want to start working on your cardio, work on your breathing, work on your lungs, work on doing whatever you can to help your asthma or your breathing problems now. That way, when the time comes, you're not hyperventilating and you just black out and you know you get sucked up into the sky. You don't want to be outside. Oh, here's another thing, okay? Many people on the truth-seeking path have at some point in time ran into the fact that there is this ring around our world of mammoths, woolly mammoths, okay? And if you have ever seen the movie uh, The Day After Tomorrow, they refer to the woolly mammoths that were instantly frozen, frozen in time, and nobody seems to know why, you know? They were flash frozen. There was uh, woolly mammoths, and they were just found frozen completely in the ice. Some stories say that the dogs that were pulling the dog sleds on these expeditions, uh, that the dogs took off to go eat the woolly mammoth flesh that was rotting because it was getting warm wherever that was, and that the woolly mammoths were preserved in the ice. They were flash frozen. Now, mammoths are just one of the things that they found that have been flash frozen. However, just the whole idea of this ring around, you know, sort of the Arctic Circle, why these why these animals are being found flash frozen has mystified people. Even all the experts, they don't understand why this happens. They explain it in the movie the day after tomorrow. They just don't incorporate the plasma apocalypse scenario. But that whole movie is about the plasma apocalypse, okay? So what do I mean? I'm going to explain it in real simple forms. Essentially, let's go back to my picture up here. Everything gets sucked up rapidly into the air. This, and it's going to move like a cyclone. Okay. That's what our air does. It moves in, um, spirals. 
Okay. So it's, everything's going to spiral up, up into the air. It's going to be spiraling up. All right. Now, because it's spiraling up, it's basically creating a huge tornado in our world. Now, what happens with the tornado is that in the middle, everything goes up. But once it gets up high enough, it branches back out and all of that stuff comes back down. Okay. Whatever doesn't leave our world will get redirected and come back down, which means all of the freezing cold air up in the Arctic, up in the North, up in the highest parts of our atmosphere is going to come back down rapidly and it's going to flash freeze those particular areas around the Arctic ring. I don't know exactly where I can only speculate at this point. However, it's, this is all perfectly described in the movie the day after tomorrow, uh, where Jake Gyllenhaal's dad, I think he works for Noah or something, you know, and, uh, they explain how these huge, uh, hurricane storms, these super hurricanes are sucking everything up, right? And that it goes up into the upper atmosphere where the air is extremely cold and then it's forced back down so fast that it doesn't have time to warm up. And then it basically flash freezes everything that it touches. Um, I believe that that is also going to happen. And this is, this is where, you know, this is, I'm sort of, I don't know, I'm speculating here, but I think that this is where our ice ages come from, that certain areas on our map do experience this cyclical ice age, right? Because all that stuff that comes right back down flash freezes that particular area in a circle. Okay. And sometimes it gets bigger. Sometimes it's smaller. It depends on the severity of this, you know, the plasma apocalypse, the, because it happens at different severity levels, depending on how long it's been since the last one. Now, I assume it's been quite some time since the last one. So I assume that this particular plasma apocalypse will be a very strong one. So don't be outside, right? You don't want to be the person who's having to hold on to the mailbox, right? Or onto a tree so you don't get sucked up into the sky. By the way, this has been a fundamental core fear for many people, myself included, for quite some time. I remember I wasn't afraid of anything growing up except getting sucked up into the sky. Now, at the time, it came in the form of I thought aliens had tractor beam power and that, you know, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to be fire in the sky, you know, I didn't want to get sucked up into the UFO or whatnot, but that was a real fear that I had. I remember one time my mom asked me to go check the mail and it was like nine o'clock at night. It was dark. And I just finished watching X-Files where this one guy got sucked up or maybe it was fire in the sky. So I went to go check the mail and I'm like looking for stuff to hold onto all the way out to the mailbox, you know, even like holding onto the car door handle. And I'm like, if the aliens suck me up, they're taking my dad's car with me, right? Uh, just, that's just a funny joke, you know, a funny story I wanted to share with you guys. Um, mostly because this, yes, this is going to be kind of a scary thing. Many people are going to be so afraid that they'll probably have heart attacks and die. That's how, that's how intimidating of a thing this is. Now, even though lots of you watch my channel all the time, you know that I'm not trying to push fear porn. I'm not trying to get people to watch this, you know, so I'm trying to talk about scary stuff so that I get views or anything. However, I do admit, yes, a lot of this stuff is going to be a f scary, you know, people are going to be afraid. However, you'll be less afraid um, if you know what to expect. Like if all of a sudden the whole world is instantly turns into mist and fog, those of you who watch this video and you have it in your head, you're prepared. You expect this to happen. So when it does, you're not like caught off guard. If anything, you're going to be like, yes, right on. This is, this is confirmation. Good. I know what to expect next. As a matter of fact, you know, which means that you'll have more confidence going into these things. So no, it's not fear porn. It's not fear tactics. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm trying to inform all of you. Now, I'll probably get some comments where people will say that anyway, but hopefully all of you can just let all those people know, hey man, this is for the better, okay? This isn't to scare people. This isn't to, you know, to get millions of views because I want people to watch scary stuff or anything. No, this is because I care about those of you who are going to survive, okay? I want, I, I care about all of you 
And I know that not everyone is going to make it. It's not designed that way. Not everybody is supposed to make it. <laughs> and honestly, I don't want everybody to make it. Uh, and I bre- I'm, I'm betting that you don't either, okay? We want the good vibes to stay, all right? But anyhow, over here you're going to see lots of examples uh, that I've put together um, of people floating up into the sky or things floating up into the sky. This is all the same event. This is, this is ground zero. This is the moment when the sky explodes, our world is depressurized and everything starts to float up into the air. Okay. This will be seen by different people in different ways. Some people will think that the Lord is calling them into the sky and they can, you know, run up to be with their, their God forever and ever good for them. That's, that's what they're going to see it as some people. Oh, I want to, I want to say thanks. Uh, one of the subscribers that I have actually recommended this movie. And so I made this, uh, this little meme or whatever they call them these days. Um, but in that movie, it's called, uh, take shelter. I, I believe it's called take shelter in that movie. This guy is telling everyone that this storm is going to come and it's just going to be a catastrophic storm, right? He has that weird dream where everything in his living room all of a sudden just shoots up and, and starts floating around, right? And there's that scene in there. I wonder if I could pull it back. Let me see if I can get that one back. Okay, so here's the scene right here, right? Everything, he's having a dream and he dreams that everything in his living room gets sucked up into the into the air and it just starts floating. That's what you can initially expect to see. Now, if you look at his face, watch this guy's face, right? At first he looks a little scared, but then he looks like he's holding his breath, right? Because the moment that this happens, it's going to be very hard for people to breathe. I'll play it one more time. Um, and I believe that's exactly what's happening over here in this movie clip. Look at his face. There is a lot of pressure going on and he probably doesn't even know what's happening, right? So a lot of people are going to immediately naturally just want to hold their breath. Here it is again. I, I'm, I'm just going to go over a lot of these pictures here, but you'll see the light coming down because the moment that, that that hole opens up in the sky, the plasma will be able to enter into our world from above, right? And this isn't speculation. This isn't conspiracy theory. This is mainstream academia teaches that we have a plasma sphere above our world, okay? Imagine what would happen when the protective barrier between us and the plasma sphere is removed or if it has a hole in it. You know, maybe academia chalks it up to the hole in the ozone layer and all of a sudden all this plasma plasma tentacles or plasma arms reach down into our world and we've got basically we're looking up into the sky at this. All right. That is what you'll be looking at when this all happens. Okay. Obviously it'll be a huge, it'll be on a way bigger scale. Um, the fifth element, look at this one right here. Now at first the conscious mind says, Oh, they're flying cars because they're in the future. Right. But the subconscious mind takes a look at this picture and says, Oh, they're not flying cars. They're floating cars. Those cars are getting sucked up into that black hole sun in the background, right? That's exactly what that's happening. Just like the conscious mind says, oh, Neo is flying this direction horizontally. The subconscious mind says, nope, he's getting sucked up into the sky with all of that debris and stuff behind him, okay? Because all the world's debris is going to get sucked right up into the sky, Let's see what else we have here. Like I said, Spaceballs accurately portrays what's basically going on. He's turning off the world's electromagnetic. He's reversing the electromagnetic poles in that particular uh, clip right there, right? See? On, off, reverse. Off, that neutral area, that's where gravity, I mean, I don't like the word gravity because I don't believe in gravity, um, but many of you out there do, and that's okay too. So, you know, I try to throw that word out there to help everyone out from time to time, but it's basically our electromagnetics that are just shut off. Okay. And if you don't think electromagnetics can work on like plastic or uh, copper or stuff like that, think again, they absolutely can. I'm not going to get into detail right now and I'm not going, you know, I'm not talking about stuff to, in order to prove it or anything. Okay. 
This is not something I want to debate anybody on, all right? This is my opinion. This is my perspective. This is my research that I'm sharing with everyone. And I don't want to argue or debate with anybody about it, okay? And I'm not saying I'm right. I could be totally wrong. But, you know, this is what I'm talking about. So, our world is going to rapidly depressurize. Now, I, I wanted to show that one there. Let's go back to this one. Basically, because consciously, he's standing on his hands. But subconsciously, he's holding on for dear life so he doesn't get sucked up. And do you notice what the atmosphere is like? Wait, let's go back. Look what the atmosphere is like. Now, I know it's a swamp, but does it have to be all foggy and misty? where Luke is training in order to learn how to use the force, which is the electromagnetics of our world, right? The force that is inside of us, the force that exists, that we can manipulate, that we are one with or can be and should be one with. Um, I believe that after this all happens, like I said, it's going to manipulate our DNA. It's going to reset your mind, your brains. Memory is going to be erased across the world. Uh, many people's memory, okay? Um, I didn't plan on talking about memory, but I might as well since I threw it out there. Um, you know, this is a painting of the rapture. It's also a painting of people getting sucked up into the sky. So however you however you slice it, people are going to go up, upwards, up, up, and away. That's where people are going to go. Um, let's see. Anyways, uh, rapid depressurization of our world will cause symptoms like nosebleeds. Some people may bleed out of their ear. It will be a euphoric feeling. So that is also good news, okay? I know a lot of people are thinking like, oh my God, it's terrifying. It's terrifying, okay? When this happens um, and people lose oxygen, basically what they report is that they were happy. Like they were okay. A lot of people... Um, who went through hypoxia training and they had their oxygen taken away very rapidly, they were basically like, if if they did die, they would have died happy. So that's good news, okay? So all the people who are experiencing all of this, um, while it is kind of terrifying, it's also going to be a sort of happy terrifying. <laughs> so I'm not trying to get sucked up. So, you know... Um, it's good news to me that at least it'll be a euphoric feeling for a, for a little while. That's why you want to plan these things out, by the way. Okay. You don't want to wait until the time comes and then all of a sudden you're delirious and you're just so euphoric that you don't think rationally enough to protect yourself or your loved ones. You know what I mean? So you want to try to have a clear and sober mind while all of this is happening. Uh, let's see here. Brain cells start dying off after about five minutes. But like I said, that's where the epicenter is. That's that's if you live at the North Pole, you have like five minutes time to think clearly enough to save your life, okay? But the further away you get, obviously the more time you have all the way up until the full 30 minutes because I think this is going to happen. I could be wrong, but you know the Bible says there was silence in heaven for a half an hour or about a half an hour. So I believe that silence is the wind being taken away, okay? Like everything gets sucked up and then all of a sudden there's no wind. It's going to be very eerie. Hey, this is another one of those ones that's upside down. Let me show you this. This is from Logan's Run. Here, let's zoom in on it. Oh. All right, so this is a clip from Logan's Run. Uh, I forgot what they call that, but that's also upside down, basically. It's just showing people getting sucked up into the the rosy cross, the Rosicrucians. Is this still upside down here? Let's turn this right side up there. Oh, so anyway, let's, let me repeat a few more things and then we're going to wrap stuff up here. You want to take uh, vitamin E. That's going to help to oxygenate your blood. Uh, vitamin C also. Um, you can invest in cell food or things like that. Um, oxygen supplements, basically. Uh, you can also get oxygen in a can, which I thought was ridiculous when I first started watching um, Spaceballs all those years ago, right? I thought that was just such a ridiculous concept. But now I'm like, wow, that blows my mind Like that I would actually see that as a necessity one of these days. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see here. Hydrogen peroxide. I don't know. I... 
I'm not going to talk about hydrogen peroxide right now because I don't know enough about it and it can be dangerous. Um, but that is also something you might want to look into. I want everyone to please leave your recommendations on how to, what to expect, how to survive, how to increase your odds of surviving these types of scenarios, um, at least for the getting sucked up, the depressurization part. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the video underneath me, this is what happens in an airplane when it's rapidly depressurized. Fog comes out of the woodworks, okay? The whole atmosphere instantly turns into, uh, it condenses, it just turns into fog or mist, or if it's cold enough, snow instantly, just psh, everywhere. You'll just see patches of snow. I just want to make sure I didn't uh, miss out on... Oh, and then there's, of course, the instant freezing, okay? Now, this is... Remember, this is nothing that I'm dictating, okay? But I believe that basically certain areas around the Arctic Circle are going to be instantly frozen. So if you live in the Arctic Circle area, then I would recommend maybe getting underground, okay? Um, or your house needs to be super insulated, so that when that freezing cold air comes back down, that you don't end up like the woolly mammoths of so long ago and are flash frozen. You know what I mean? Because that is a possibility. So you want to get deep underground or you want to be in an, a bunker or something that's very insulated, okay? Um, everyone else that's not flash frozen, yes, it's going to get real cold. The temperature is going to drop real quick, but it's only going to last until this, until this is over, you know, maybe three, three days to a week maximum. Okay. When it's all said and done, you'll never have to be worried about being cold ever again. Okay, because we're going to go back to a paradise kind of way of living. Uh, our world is going to be a lot better. Like I said, I believe that um, we'll actually get an influx of oxygen into our system before it closes back up. Um, and in order to explain that, oh, this is the map I was telling you about, by the way. Somebody sent me this map. Well, they sent me this website. And this is from the uh, NOAA website, the official uh, government website for our weather, basically, for the weather of the whole world. I don't know, remember what NOAA stands for, National Oceanic and Space Administration. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But anyway, um, what you see here is the area in the middle that's all dotted. This is the most powerful suction, okay? Now, right here, it's PSI, pounds per square inch, all right? This is our pressure that we have from all the weight of the atmosphere itself weighing down on us, okay? Now, if there is a pressure, this is this map is usually for a pressure explosion for when pressure is coming at you. Um, but I believe it might also be able to be used uh, productively, and that the in the inverse of this should also hold true as well. Maybe not exactly, but at least you can get an idea by looking at it, right? So let's say that there's a pressure shock wave coming at you. You would use something like this in order to, in order to tell. Um, how much damage is going to happen, right? And basically, I just blew up their little map and I put it over a map of uh, the circular model here, right? Now let's take a look at it. In the middle, this is where you can expect the strongest suction, okay? The highest or most rapid depressurization. And then in the other area, if I can get it back, there we go. Now in this orange dotted area, which is where I live and many of you will live as well, this is a uh, pressure that is greater than 3.5 PSI, which basically according to that is the most likely to uh, cause serious injury. So people will be seriously injured. That's, that's how strong of a force it's going to be, you know, to basically move things out of their place. That's why I keep doing that. The things in the middle, that's strong enough to suck up a house, basically. that That's uh, the Wizard of Oz. Like, if you live in that area, I highly recommend you get into a cave or you go underground. That's just, that's just my advice. I am not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV, but that's my advice to you guys. Get in the earth, okay? Get underground, get into a cave if you live in this area. Looks like it's basically kind of like the Arctic Circle. If you live beyond that, you're taking your chances, as am I. Uh, in this area right here, 
I don't believe it's going to be strong enough to pull up a house or to pull houses from their foundations or to suck trees up or anything like that. Okay. So if you get grounded, then you have better odds than those who are outside basically. Right now, everything outside of this, obviously it's just going to get weaker and weaker. The suction is going to get weaker and weaker, the further out it goes. So that doesn't mean you can just stand outside and watch it all happen. That's what a lot of people are going to do. Believe it or not, there will be millions of people that have never seen this video and others like this one. They're all just going to go outside and look at the pretty lights right? They're going to go outside during the Christmas day catastrophe. They're going to look at the pretty lights. They're going to think that they're so beautiful and they're going to say, wow, what's happening? This is amazing. Next thing you know, they're slowly going to flow off into those lights. Okay. Those are the dead lights. Those are Stephen King's dead lights of it. Remember, you don't want to look into its eyes. That's the all seeing eye up above us. When, when that circle in the middle of our world opens up, that's the all seeing eye. That's the wheel in the sky that keeps on turning. That's uh, the entrance to Wonderland, Oz, whatever you would like to call it. Okay. That's, that's the portal to other worlds, NASA and the rest of the world, all of the other space agencies, they're basically practicing right now for the big event. They want to leave. They want to ascend higher than the thrones of heaven or, you know, however people would like to say it. NASA wants to get out. Okay. And that's, that's really the big conspiracy. That's why they don't tell everybody. They want people to be compliant, complacent. They don't want them to panic. They don't want them to worry. They don't want them to know that all of their world leaders are going to leave them one day when they shoot out of this world and they go to some other world. Okay. Anyway, that's just a short version of what I wanted to share. Let me check my notes, make sure I didn't miss anything. Let's see here. Don't get sucked up into the sky. That's all. Don't get sucked up. Um, if you're going to be in your house, okay, you need to be in a part of the house that is going to be the tethered to the ground. Okay. The strongest part of your house that is in the ground that is cemented or I don't know, that's just in the ground, the basement, whatever it may be. You want to be in those parts of the house. Okay. A fortified closet or something. That's going to be the best. Now I'm just, I'm just speaking my own thoughts about this. Okay. Because that's what my family and I are going to be doing. I don't want to go into, I've, I've done a lot of research about my particular area. So please don't worry about me. I think we're going to be okay. All right. Um, but yeah, I've done a lot of research about my particular area, the bedrock, the electromagnetism around where I live, uh, the altitude, all of that stuff. I'm just checking my notes here and then we're going to wrap things up. All right, let's see. So basically, to wrap things up, uh, our world, the sun's going to turn off. That's how you know everything's starting, okay? The lights will go out, okay? The stars will go out. The sun will go out. The moon possibly might go out. I'm not sure about that one because I think we're going to see the moon actually break up in the sky because that's good. you're going to see the moon break, and that's the dome of the world across from us, our sister planet or our sister world. And when we see their dome breaking up, that's when you know your dome's going to break up too. Uh, lots of religious people will happily jump into the sky as they experience their rapture. Um, people will be sucked up by the aliens or however it's going to be seen. Uh, things will start to float in the air. Okay. They're going to defy gravity. And then there's going to a deep be a, a depressurization of our world. The world will depressurize, which will cause the fog to appear everywhere and everything else that's not tied down or holding on is going to get sucked out. This I believe will last about a half an hour. Um, people will experience a uh, loud popping in their ears. Uh, there will be an eerie silence in the world for at least a half an hour. Um, people experience bloody noses, possibly blood coming out of the ears, a loss of oxygen. This is, I believe, going to be the most crucial part aside from not being outside. Don't be outside when this happens. Spoigies. Spoigie. Just subscribed. Welcome, Spoigie. Oh, and welcome to our other newest member as well. Um, all the new members. People have been uh, joining as members. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm honored. I can't really say much else. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to have you here for as long as we're all here together. 
Uh, let's see. People can experience things like delirium, hallucinations, headaches, a loss of focusness, a loss of awareness. This is probably uh, the most crucial thing. You need to have oxygen in your blood. You need to have a good cardio going. So start working on yourself now. I'm going to. I mean, if you want to, it's up to you. But I'm going to start getting back into my exercises. I'm starting to take vitamin E. I'm, I'm starting to take, uh, me and Jenny are taking cell food, which will oxygenate your blood and actually has lots of really interesting, um, this does, this does a lot for, for the body. I might have to talk about that another time. Uh, you can get oxygen in a can if you want to. Okay. I would, I would get more than you need. Okay. Because, I've read some reviews on these oxygen in a can and sometimes they have duds. Sometimes you get one and it's, you know, it had a leak in it or something. So you don't want that to happen to you when you're getting, when you're holding on, you know, and you're trying not to get sucked out. Oh, by the way, another thing, as I was doing my research for this video, um, you know, sometimes I would look at planes depressurizing. I would look at, uh, tornadoes and cyclones and hurricanes for examples of what happens in low pressure systems. And, um, man, I forgot where I was going with that, but basically it's the exact same thing. It's just a huge, super massive version of it. Okay. So everything's going to be depressurized. Um, there's going to be silence after we lose. This is going to take away all of the wind. The Bible explains it, that, that there will be four angels that are holding the wind back for a time. Okay. Well, what happens is all the air is going to go up into our world and that little Atari that little Atari pattern right there, which is what I believe that is, um, everything's going to get sucked upward, including all the air and everything. Once it happens, once it stops, we won't have any wind in our world for quite some time, right? We're going to, we're going to need all the currents to be turned back on in order for the air to develop currents in order for us to have wind. So there's not going to be any wind for a while. Um, at first there's going to be very strong wind. I don't want to downplay that. Okay. I don't want people to think there's not going to be any wind. No, there's going to be a lot of wind to begin with. And then that wind is going to decrease over time. People will get headaches. They'll have a loss of focus. People will not be able to take instruction. If they are suffering from a lack of oxygen, uh, you're going to need to do things for people. Okay. So if you're one of the prepared ones and you have your oxygen, and you can think clearly, you're going to need to think clearly for other people who won't be able to. Now, just keep that in mind, you know, drowning people tend to want to grab on to the swimmers. Okay. So that's one of the first things I learned whenever I was in swim qualification for the Marine Corps is we actually had to get drowned by the drill instructor and we had to fight the drill instructor so that he wouldn't drown us. Um, so just be careful. I know you, you, you love your family members and your friends and whatnot, but whoever you're around, try to be aware of yourself. Make sure that you have enough oxygen and watch out for other people who might be a little delirious or loopy. Okay. Uh, let's see. Don't be outside. Don't, don't think that you can hide in your car. Okay. Don't, don't go get into a car or anything like that because cars are going to lift up into the sky and they're going to get ejected out of our world. Okay. I don't know how many of them, but I don't see a lot of cars surviving. Um, which could be one of the reasons why we don't see, uh, cars from past civilizations or airplanes or any of this stuff. It's all debris. If it's not tied down, it's getting sucked out. And uh, that's exactly why, if I can flip over here, that's exactly why you see, let me go back to that. Stephen King's It. Okay, the the wheel in the sky, the all-seeing eye, the whole, the plasma apocalypse, that is it, okay? People don't know what to call it, and they have very various names for it, so it's just known as it, all right? And that's why its color is uh, red, because of the plasma, Plasma tentacles are going to come down. It's going to be very beautiful, neon, kind of reddish, orangish, you know, like neon colors. Let me go back to that. So anyhow, this is why he says you'll float too. Okay? It's not just fiction. It's not just made up or anything. You will float too if you let it get you. Okay? So that's up to you. If you want to look into the deadlights and you want to get sucked up, that's your choice. Okay. And I don't judge anyone who does that because I don't know what's on the other side. I don't know. It could be God. It could be another heavenly place. It could be all kinds of things. It could be really bad stuff too, but I don't want to take that hope away from people. I'm just saying, if you let it take you, 
then you will float too. Okay, so that's Stephen King's it. That's why he carries the balloon around. Not because he's just a creepy clown and clowns have balloons. Not all clowns have balloons. His balloon is a symbol. It's a red balloon because it's he's talking about defying gravity, floating up into the air. This type of stuff is going to happen. Some of you might see it. Um, I don't recommend watching. I don't recommend trying to record anything, okay? If anything, I say stay far, far away from electronics or anything that is electronically conductive, okay? You definitely don't want to be doing selfies or taking pictures of uh, people floating up into the sky. Just have the confidence and know beforehand that that's what you can expect to see. If you can see it, you are in danger of it. So that's my advice to you. As, as cool as I think this all sounds, because I'm into all that kind of stuff, I'm into like, I'm into the end of the world. I'm into entropy. I'm into all that type of stuff. Okay. Um, I would love to have a nice safe place to be able to just watch all this. Um, not because I look forward to death and destruction or anything like that. I just think it's exciting. It's, it's an exciting element to a very boring and bland world where most people want off. They want you to stop the world so that they can get off. This world sucks, right? So for me, this is very exciting. And I knew that something exciting was going to happen in my lifetime. Turns out it's probably going to be the uh, electromagnetic plasma that's going to come into our world. It's going to suck things up. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot about other aspects of this particular event. So I'm going to be talking probably in my next video, I'll probably talk about the plasma tentacles, what to expect, what I believe they're looking for or are attracted to, however you would like to say it. Um, I'm going to be talking about Starro. I'm going to be talking about the dream crabs that attach to people's faces. Some of you can already put these pieces together. Um, and I'm also going to be giving some huge shout out to some other channels out there who are getting involved and other people out there are starting to post stuff that they have seen elements of the plasma apocalypse for other people to watch and to learn from and to use in order to prepare themselves. I really admire that. And I want to say thank you on behalf of all of the thousands and thousands of people who are desperately trying to find information out there on the internet and on the computer. By the way, there's very little information about this in comparison to so many other conspiracies and all of that stuff. This plasma apocalypse is the unifying conspiracy to end all conspiracies, okay? This is the cover-up. This is the um, extinction-level event. This is the thing that happens from time to time that the elites of the world know about, and they're getting ready for it. This is the one biggest, hugest secret that ties together all secrets. I think, in my opinion. Um, so I just want to thank everyone who's out there making videos or dropping comments in videos like this one, uh, information, links, um, ideas, song lyrics. If you start looking, if you start looking, you're going to see that this event, the black hole sun opening up and sucking everything out and starting our world all over again. Um, this is every single movie. Every single song, you know, for the most part, I'm, I'm generalizing, but it could be, it could literally be every, every one. Do you think that Hollywood is getting together and they're one of two things is happening. Either they're all in on it because they all write about it. They all talk about it. Okay. Either they all know about it, in which case this is a huge, uh, thank you that I owe to them for sharing the information. Okay. They don't have to share it on the news. They can put it in the movies if they want to. Like I said, there's no disclaimer saying all of this fictional movie is a lie and it's not true. You know what I mean? Uh, this over here is just totally made up. No, it doesn't say that. That's we decide that. So either all of Hollywood is in on it and they all know about it or everybody, musicians, actors, actresses, everyone subconsciously taps into that information. We are connected to all of these events all of the time. We're all interconnected. And I believe as time gets closer and closer and closer to the actual event, that collective subconscious knowledge, that knowing that we all have, 
is going to amplify and amplify exponentially until basically everyone knows that this is imminent. Everyone knows like, hey, the doomsday clock is ticking. It's on zero. Like this is something we instinctively know. I think that it's going to get so serious that people are going to start dreaming about it. Like, I mean, we already are. I've had dreams for quite some time about this event and many of you have as well, but I think it's going to really start amplifying in these times right now because those energies are picking up and picking up and the poles are shifting and the energies are shifting and our bodies and our body energies are shifting. Everything is shifting. So I think that this is not any huge secret. I mean, it's a secret that we've kept from ourselves, but all secrets come to light. And this is just something that is manifesting itself. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be a secret group of people who are keeping it from us. This is something that is just manifesting itself. It's something that we're going to start realizing that magic is returning to our world, that we live in a fantastic planet or in a fantastic world or universe or whatever people want to call it, that there are monsters that there are wild and interesting things out there, that, that the world is nothing like we thought it was and everything like we thought it wasn't, that we live in Alice in Wonderland, that we are going to, we're going to see stuff that we thought was the stuff of movies and only movies. That's the world that we live in. That's why I'm excited. That's why I like sharing this information with everybody. I hope I didn't leave anything out. I feel like I've touched base a lot. Um, I think I've pretty much touched base on everything I wanted to. Um, check out the, you know, for some symbolism. I couldn't play it because of copyrights, but uh, go re-watch the music video, Black Hole Sun. Check that out because that whole music video is about this topic. Uh, you can also check out The Sound of Silence. Probably a lot of other ones. I, I, I'm eager to listen to what you all think of to, because it's everywhere. I mean, you could, you could literally pick a movie at random and you could see the symbolism that exists. For example, I was watching Winnie the Pooh the other day, right? And I'm like, I know every movie is about this plasma apocalypse. So what elements does Winnie the Pooh have? It's not an apocalyptic movie. And yet I realized it's about talking animals, you know? And I believe that after this reset, after this uh, cyclical plasma apocalypse, whatever people would like to call it, okay, after this event happens, that we will all have certain powers returned to us, that our DNA will be unlocked, and we will be able to talk to animals once again. So the concept of Winnie the Pooh is not out there at all. When you consider this new information, we'll be able to speak with the animals. They will be just as sentient as we see other human beings being, right? Which is something that we used to be able to do according to all of the myths and the legends and the scriptures and the writings, okay? This is something we've done before. This event unlocks that within many of us. Maybe not everybody, but many people have certain abilities unlocked. Being able to talk to animals and hear them, being able to listen to animals as well, understanding them, right? Some people can do that today. I'm learning to do that right now. But it's going to become second nature to a lot of us who survive and make it through. So that's just an example, you know, like Winnie the Pooh, boom, people talking to animals. Okay. There's actually a comic, uh, DC, I'll, 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 I'll help you guys out. DC, the DC version of the plasma apocalypse is whenever all the DC superheroes fight against Starro. Okay. And I'm going to talk about Starro probably in my next video when I talk about the plasma tentacles or the plasma fingers, whatever you'd like to call them. Okay. And uh, Starro represents the plasma apocalypse, the, the eye opening up in the sky, the arms, the plasma tentacles reaching out. Oh, let's make that one a little bigger. Anyhow, that's Starro. That's in the DC universe, right? Well, I'll, I'll talk about it. I'll leave that as a cliffhanger. Uh, we'll talk about Starro and, and uh, the plasma tentacles in the next video. 
In the meantime, please leave all of your recommendations, your, you know, examples from movies or music videos, because I'm going to be going through all of these Plasma Apocalypse videos looking for more information that you guys might have that I can use. Okay. And so are thousands and hopefully millions of other people. So feel free to really, you know, put as many comments as you can that are helpful in these videos. And I'm going to make this video a part of my Plasma Apocalypse playlist uh, so you can have all the Plasma Apocalypse videos all together. Anyway, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thanks to all the new members. Um, I'm probably over in the chat right now having a great time with you guys. Like I said, I can't do live streaming because I did get a copyright strike, but that's okay. It doesn't bother me. We're going to keep pushing forward. Uh, we're going to do premieres instead of live streams for the next month or so. Valerie J just subscribed. So welcome Valerie J. I'm going to get out of here. I, I'm losing my voice and I've been talking a lot. If I missed anything, type in at J dreamers. Feel free to ask a question in the comments. If you do, I'll try to get, I'll try to respond to it. Um, I want to say thank you as well to all of my moderators. Okay. I talk about stuff that is just so far out there that it's, it's very easy for people to be negative and to say anything that would bring us all down. So I want to thank all of the moderators for really keeping uh, the comments section nice and tidy and keeping the chat nice and tidy. I thank you guys so much for helping us all out to raise the vibes, right? I want the vibes to go up and I want me to stay here, <laughs> at least for now, okay? Who knows? Maybe I'll change my mind about it. I know my mom wants me to get sucked up with her in the rapture, so I don't know. I'm reserving judgment, but for right now, my plan is to stay grounded and survive and make it make it through uh, hell week, so to speak. Anyway, if you guys have any more questions about this particular topic, leave your question in the comment section. I'll try to get to it. Uh, for those of you who are members, if you have a question, you can just email me. Uh, just go to the community section and you know, use the email that's right there for the members in the community section. And I always reply ASAP to all the members. And I want to thank everybody for your support and for your encouragement. Thanks for your good vibes. I'm Jay Dreamers. Good vibes and goodbye. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know. Let's see if I can get this down. I'm Sometimes I get a little nervous at the end. So let me see if I can uh, find it here. There we go. Okay, we're going to run the credits. Uh, let's see here. We're going to run the credits. Sorry, I had some stuff out of order. <laughs> I was so excited to get everything ready for this particular video. Um, you know, the whole go getting sucked up into the air. That's just one aspect of the plasma apocalypse. There's going to be a lot more stuff to talk about. We're going to talk about the dream crabs. We're going to talk about the plasma tentacles. We're going to talk about the aftermath. We're going to talk about the earthquakes and the devastation and all of the, all of the things that are related to the one main event that's going to happen. We're going to talk about, uh, how to stay safe, safe areas, safe places. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, but let me get out of here. Thank you guys again. I appreciate you and we'll see you next time. If you would like to, I never have ever asked anyone to leave a comment, you know, or to share or any of that, but this could be some important information. So you could be possibly helping other people out if you do share it. So if you don't, it's no skin off my back or what, however the saying goes, you can share it if you want to. If I was watching, these are the videos I probably would share. Instead of people sharing their stupid cotton candy videos about nothing or funny stuff or dumb stuff or mindless things, you know, we could share stuff like this so that people at least have the information when the time comes because they're like, oh, wow, the sun just turned off. I remember that one guy talking about this in that plasma video, you know, like at least I have something there. Anyway, I'm going to go. Thanks a lot. I love you guys and we'll see you next time.